Hi, uh, hi everybody, my name is Javier Reyes. I am the purchasing manager here at Joliet Junior College Culinary Arts Department. I'm also an adjunct teacher. Um, and I wanted to show you today uh, how to make quick tamales at home. So um, you might not be familiar with tamales, but it is uh, a Mexican dish. It is very, prop very popular. Uh, it's sometimes known as a, a Christmas dish because it's more popular during Christmas time but um, people have them all year round. And they're very easy to make at home. So I wanted to show you, uh, people think it might be a little bit too complicated, but it's not. I'll show you the steps and uh, a few ways you can cut some corners so make it a little bit easier for you to do at home. Um, so tamal, the word uh, tamale, tamales, um, the plural is tamales and the singular is tamal. So one tamal, not tamale. A lot of people call it a one tamale. It's actually one tamal. So a tamal basically is just uh, a little bit of dough with a, fi uh, a, a corn dough with a filling uh, wrapped usually in a corn husk. So um, we'll start by talking about uh, the corn husk because it's, it's the easiest to talk about. Uh, these are just regular corn husk. You can buy them. Mo most of these ingredients you'll be able to buy at any um, grocery store. Most of the grocery stores in the area, I know Jewel, uh, Jewel carries it, Mariano's carry this, uh, but there's plenty of uh, Mexican grocery stores uh, as well in the area that carry all these items. So the first item I want to talk about are the, the leaves. So they come in uh, uh, bundles like this, uh, one pound bundles, and they're dried. And when you take them out, you'll notice that they have a little bit of a, a sour smell to them. That's vinegar that is sprayed on them to, to, to preserve them. So uh, in order to clean them off and to get them uh, pliable again, all you have to do is soak them in hot water for about an hour. That's all it takes. Not really, some people think overnight, but uh, just about an hour in hot water. Uh, uh, put a plate on top of the bowl so that they, they uh, don't um, float up. And then uh, they'll be ready to go in about an hour, nice and pliable. So I have some right here that are uh, all done and pliable so and dried so I'm going to set them uh, aside for for now um, the next item I want to talk about and the most important one is the dough the masa masa is Spanish for dough so traditionally corn masa is made by taking um, dried corn uh, kernels and then uh, boiling them in hot water with a little bit of uh, food grade lye like caustic lye and then um, it, it gets soaked overnight and then the next day you grind it up and you get a, a very nice, uh, very good dough. But that's not something most people can do. Um, uh, most people can do that at home. Uh, there are a few places in Joliet where you can actually buy the ready-made dough. Um, the, there's one on Kelly, uh, Kelly Avenue and Black Road, right by Thayer Brothers. They, they are um, a company that makes tortillas. So the dough that's made for tortillas is also the same dough that's made for tamales. So you can buy the dough there and then prepare it for the tamales. Um, most people, though, use this. They use a dry product called um, uh, masa harina which means uh, basically dough flour this is uh, basically the same procedure that, that we talked about but then they dry that dough into a powder and then they sell it so all you have to do is add water and you have dough masa to make tortillas the next step in order to make it into masa for tamales is add some fat to it. Usually, uh, the same way you would make a cookie, uh, you would cream your fat. Usually it's pork lard, traditionally, you know, because it's also very delicious, but um, a lot of people also like to do it with uh, shortening, Crisco. And then just, uh, you would uh, cream that like a, for, for a cookie, add masa, your masa, your reconstituted masa to your dough. Uh, and to your to your fat, and then that creates something called prepared masa or masa preparada, which is used to make tamales. Uh, I'm going to take one step further and make it even easier, and then use this product. This is actually a masa for tamales already made. Um, this is done here in Chicago. This is El Milagro brand. Um, there's a couple other brands that, that there are sold here in the area. These are sold in the refrigerated section of uh, Mexican grocery stores. They've, I've also seen this at uh, Tony's Fine Foods. Uh, they also carry this. So um, the, the great thing about this, it's already done. You don't have to do anything to it. All you have to do is uh, get it ready. So uh, this has already the fat added to it. This is made with lard. So if you wanted to do a vegetarian version of tamales, you would have to make your own masa. Um, 
uh, because this has fat in it, when you it is, and it's refrigerated, when you first pull it out of the refrigerator, it's going to be very brittle, uh, very very powdery. So the first thing you need to do is uh, make sure you leave it out of your refrigerator for a little bit, uh, and then you'll. Uh, uh, put it into your bowl, and then I have some already worked. And all you have to do is work, work it a little bit, just so that it gets the consistency of like really thick cookie dough, like a soft cookie dough or a thick um, uh, uh, cornbread batter. So I, 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 I would say cookie dough is a better approximation. So once it gets that nice consistency, very smooth, you're ready to actually, th that your masa is ready to go. So you can set that aside and then you can use it for um, your next step. I'm going to set this over here just for a second. Um, so then let's talk about fillings. What can you fill a tamale with? Um, anything, really anything. Traditionally, you would do uh, pork or chicken. Um, uh, you will also do beef, uh, but I've done them with cheese and uh, peppers or uh, beans and cheese. If you want to do something vegetarian, um, if you want to do vegan, you can just do um, plain beans. Uh, you can do chickpeas. You can do um, all sorts of vegetables in there. Anything that's not too watery. So I would do like um, sauteed peppers or uh, you can use any leftover vegetables you have at home. Anything can go in there. And it's usually accompanied by some sort of salsa, some sauce. Um, so today we're going to do uh, a very simple one. We're going to do chicken with uh, salsa verde or green salsa. Um, the chicken is, nothing could be simpler, so this chicken is just a rotisserie chicken I got at the grocery store uh, and then I just pulled. So if you have any leftover chicken from the, from the grocery store, that can work. So that's all this is, it's just a leftover rotisserie chicken. So um, all you need now to, to do, add to this is some salsa. So we're going to make the, the green salsa, the salsa verde, and the, that is pretty simple too. So. Uh, for the salsa, the salsa verde is usually made with a type of to, uh, tomato-like, it's a cousin of the tomato called a tomatillo. Um, this is a tomatillo. So tomatillos, um, they look like little green tomatoes and they come in these little husks. And I love them because they're very bright, very uh, sour. So um, the salsa verde is kind of like a very, it's a very bright salsa, very nice and uh, a little bit of tart. So it, it's not a green tomato. It's a difference, there's a difference between a tomatillo and an unripe regular tomato, green tomato. So this comes with a little husk. So in order to, um, to use them, you would take the husk off and then twist a little bit and you have your uh, tomatillo there. Um, and you would want to rinse them. Uh, before you put them, before you cook them. So these need to be cooked in order to um, to, to, to use. You can, you can, I've seen a, a raw tomatillo salsa, but that uh, it's a little bit too, too acidic to, for me. So what I like to do is traditionally would you just, uh, you would just boil these until they're cooked, um, but I prefer to actually roast them. You can broil them or roast them, or if you have a grill, uh, you can also put them over the grill. So one of the reasons I like to do that is because it, uh, it makes them sweeter a little bit, and it adds a little of that char flavor that's, that's very, very, um, very good. So for this salsa, um, all you would need are the tomatillos, um, a little bit of onion that I'm also going to roast, uh, a few cloves of garlic, uh, and then for your spice, because it has to have a little bit of spice. Um, you can make it without any spice at all, um, but if you want a little bit of spice, you have to put a, little, a few chilies on there. So these are serrano chilies. Uh, serrano chili, chilies are, they look like a skinny jalapeno. Um, they have more flavor than a jalapeno and they're spicier than a jalapeno, a little hotter. So uh, for this, um, this is about a pound of, a uh, pound and a half of tomatillos. I'm going to do two serranos. This will make like a, a mild, uh, meat, mild to medium salsa. Um, and what I do is I put all of it into my broiler. I just put it under my broiler and um, it, it takes about five minutes for it to cook. I just, I, I stay by my broiler, I check it out, I uh, take them out and turn them as they, they, they'll start to blister on the top and they'll change color from a bright green to more of an olive green. Your tomatillos will change color. That's how you know that they're done. So um, I'll show you, I already made some uh, ahead of time. And so I'll show you what they look like once they're cooked. So here are my uh, cooked 
uh, salsa ingredients. I have my tomatillos. You'll notice that they've gone from um, uh, a very bright green to a, like an olive green. You'll see a little bit of uh, charring on the top. That, that's a little bit of a extra flavor. I like that extra charred flavor. My onion is charred. My, uh, my garlic is charred. My chilies, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the, uh, the little stem and that's going to be ready for, for me to, to blend. So all I need to do is just put everything into my blender. It all goes in together. And um, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Now, um, I don't add any water. Some people would add a little bit of water maybe just to let it uh, keep it, make it uh, blend a little faster. But uh, that makes just a, a watery salsa. I usually don't add water unless I need to to my, my salsa verde. So um, I'm going to add all that. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, fresh cilantro just to uh, brighten it up a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. Um, and all the recipes are in a booklet that uh, we will be sharing with you guys. Uh, and then a little bit of salt. Just a, a little bit of salt just to season it. And then I'm going to blend this up and then we'll have salsa. So uh, you can blend this, um, it's going to be loud for a second, you can blend this for a long time so it's very smooth or if you like it a little bit chunkier you just blend it for a little bit of time. I'm going to blend it till it's nice and smooth. That's all it takes. And so I have my salsa ready to go. So I would taste it for um, seasoning. Excuse me a second. I would taste it for seasoning. That's good. Um, and uh, so salsas, as they sit overnight, because this will hold in your refrigerator for a good week. It has so much, so much acidity that it's not going to go bad. And you'll notice that it gets milder the longer it sits in your fridge. So when you taste it and it tastes spicy, just remember that it's going to be milder by tomorrow. So um, all I need to do now is just uh, combine some of that salsa with my chicken. And then um, mix it up. And that's going to be our filling. So we have basically everything we need. We have our uh, masa, we have our um, filling, and we have our uh, tamale leaves. That's all we need. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to um, assemble the tamales. And that's what probably takes the, the, uh, the most time. And this is where this becomes a family activity. I love making tamales at home because we can, everybody can get together and, and once you have everything, all the ingredients set up, um, all you need to do is get your family and then uh, it'll go a lot faster. My, my grandpa used to say, if you don't help, you don't eat. So that's why everybody has to help a little bit. So once you have all your ingredients, um, you set up your station, ready to go. And what I like to do is I start with uh, a leaf. So you'll notice that Obviously, these are coming in all shapes and sizes because as if you've ever ch shucked corn, you know that the, 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 the leaves further away from the center of the cob, they're going to be wider. So this is a smaller leaf, and then you have um, some wider leaves. So um, this is like really wide. So if it's really wide, uh, I, these split really easily. So I just cut it down to size till they're about you know, the size of my palm. So that's about as, uh, as wide as you want it. Um, and then I like to put it with the pointy end pointing towards me. So I set it down. And then uh, I'll show you a couple techniques that I like to use to, to uh, build the tamales. So um, I have um, my spoon for the masa. So I just take a good tablespoonful. And then I just put it on the, the middle of the, of the leaf. Uh, and then spread out towards the long edge. Okay, uh, I do that because I want to make a, a good sized tamale, uh, but if I spread too close to the other edge, the folding is not going to work. So make sure you put it in the middle and then spread all the way down to the edge 
and then you go edge to, from left to right, edge to edge, and all the way to the top. So when you're done, it just takes a second, you'll have uh, masa in the top uh, half of your, um, your leaf ready to go. And then all you need to do is add a little bit of filling to the middle, right in the middle, and that's that. And next is the folding. The folding is the next procedure. It's pretty simple. Um, you, this is the way I like to fold them. Um, my mom folds it a different way. Um, I have friends who fold it in different ways, but this is the way I prefer to fold it. Makes it a lot easier. So what I like to do is say grab both edges and then meet them at the middle. And so I have it like this. This looks like a little, like a taco, right? So there, um, the, the edges are, are not uh, splitting apart. And then I take the edge and fold it over in half again, okay? And then I take it like this and sort of like a toothpaste, a, uh, to a toothpaste, I push it down a little bit so that I can fold the tail back. And that's my tamale. I'm gonna do that a couple more times just to show you. Again, this is a bit of a big, big of a leaf. Um, and then I'm gonna put it pointy ends towards me. Take about a tablespoon of masa, right, plop it in the middle, and spread out. Spread out towards the edges. Edge to edge, try to get as much uh, as close to the edge as possible, left to right. And then you um, take a little bit of filling and put it in the middle. Here's where somebody can be um, spreading the masa, another person can be doing the filling and, and the folding. Um, so this is where, this is a good team project. And then I'm gonna lift it up and uh, both ends meet and then fold it in half again, like that. And then like a toothpaste, I push back a little bit just so that all the masa goes to the front. And then I fold the, the tail back and that's the tamale. Um, I'm going to show you one more way to do it that uh, sometimes uh, works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, I like to put, uh, another way to do it is just put in that same tablespoon in the middle, and then I take another leaf, uh, make sure it's a little bit mo still moist so that you can uh, work it, and then I put it on top and I sort of flan it out with my hand. This makes it go a little bit faster till it, till it, uh, it spreads all the way to the edges and then I lift the, the leaf a little bit, and there's my uh, masa spread a little bit. Now, I notice here in this, this leaf that it's starting to split on me, and I'll show you what happens when that, what to do when that happens. So if I fold it like I'm usually gonna do, I'll notice that it might um, be splitting at the bottom. If it's starting to split at the bottom there, what you can do is just add another leaf that nothing's gonna happen to it. So I add another leaf to the bottom to fix that, that seam that's splitting. And I can do the same procedure. I just fold it in half and then fold it up, fold the tail up, and that's that. We'll do one more and then we'll move on to the cooking of it and I'll show you how to cook them. So um, here's another leaf. Doesn't matter that there's a hole there. Uh, it's not gonna escape or, or uh, come out the other side. So I'll just put it right down the middle and I'll take my leaf like before and I use it to flatten it, flatten the dough. And then lift it up and that's almost to the edge. I wanna add a little more, spread out a little more. And then all I have to do Put a little more filling on the inside. And then again, fold in half. Fold in half again, fold it over. And then push up like a toothpaste, tube of toothpaste, fold up the tail, and then you have your tamales ready to go. And then, then I'm gonna show you now how to um, cook them. Okay, so uh, I wanna show you now how to cook the tamales. Um, there's a couple ways, uh, you have to steam them. Uh, tamales are steamed, um, but there's a couple ways to steam them. Uh, you can go ahead and buy one of these. This is, this is literally a, tama a tamale a steam, steam uh, pot. Um, you can buy these at any uh, Mexican grocery store. They are super cheap. They're, they're made out of really thin aluminum um, because all they are used for is 
steaming. So they're, they're extremely uh, cheap. You can do anything else with them. You can make soup. You can do anything with them except for steaming. But you can use them for like a, a, a crab boil or anything like that. But uh, basically all it is is it's, um, it's uh, uh, a steamer with a base on the front. So all you have to do is add water to the bottom just to bring it up. Um, turn, the, turn the heat on. Uh, when, once the steam comes up, you're ready to put in your tamales. I like to put in uh, a few tamale leaves on the bottom just to line the pot. This way um, the tamales are not in contact with the metal. And then all you do is grab your tamales um, and then lay them vertically on the pot so that they don't tip over. And that's all you need to do. Um, there are all sorts of tamale uh, steamers. Some are, are much bigger than this. Some have dividers in them so you can actually separate the different fillings. Um, and all you have to do is just uh, get the, the steam going and then cover it up. And it takes about an hour steam time for the tamales to be done. Um, if you don't want to buy one of these, you might also have one of these vegetable steamers. So all you have to do is just, same deal, uh, put them inside any pot you have, line them with uh, tamale leaves, and it'll, it'll do the same function. Uh, some people also have um, uh, like those uh, double, double boilers where you have like for, for spaghetti for pasta that come up uh, with, uh, with a strainer already on it. So you can use that to steam as well. Anything you have that, that's uh, steamable will, will work for the tamales. Uh, so one hour later, you'll have tamales and I'll show you how, uh, tamale, how they look when they are done. So let me show you how you can uh, know when your tamales are done. So um, you, after about an hour, you can pull them from the steamer. They'll be a little bit soft still, but let them cool for about two to three minutes, and then take one out, and you probably won't be able to touch them because they're gonna be hot. But when you lift the, the leaf off, and you see it come off of the, the leaf, then you know that they're done. So now, you can just um, take them off the leaf, and uh, set them down. And uh, that's it, you have tamales. You can enjoy these with, um, with uh, some beans and rice or uh, a, a salad, any type of other um, item that you wanna serve them with or just eat them as is. That's uh, how, how we usually eat them, just eat tamales as is. So um, you can always uh, serve them plain or add a little extra salsa just to keep, it, um, keep them a little spicier. So uh, that's it for tamales. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, at JJC Culinary Arts, we are uh, in the process of doing um, summer classes that start next week. Uh, and we're open for registration now for fall classes. So if you, anybody, you know anybody who is interested in uh, joining the program from uh, high school grads all the way to uh, retirees, anybody who's interested in uh, becoming a, a culinarian, a professional cook, uh, come come uh, talk to us. Uh, Department Secretary uh, Dietra Randall Newland is will take your uh, information and uh, set you up with one of our uh, advisors. I am an, also an advisor, so we can walk you through the program and how it works. Um, don't forget to also look at uh, JJC's community class catalog. We have a lot of culinary classes coming up for the summer and for the fall, so uh, including another tamale class. So if you want to try making your tamales yourself, um, uh, we also teach a class here. Um, uh, uh, tamale class. We also have class on pierogi making and um, uh, sausage making, all sorts of different classes that uh, uh, will run this uh, summer or in the fall. So um, reach out to us. And again, if you know anybody who's interested in uh, culinary and becoming part of the culinary industry, uh, make sure to reach out to us and, and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much.